this is the perfect room to meet me because my life is in this little room. It's the corner of a castle in Indiana, Fort Wayne to be exact. But if you look around, there are mementos from my travels. For example, the boots, the machete from the hitchhike to India when I was a young boy, about 22 years old. All the various hats from adventures, motorcycle trips. My heritage is generals and judges. General Putnam is my ancestor, a proud heritage. Um, I have pictures of me as a newspaper reporter. Then I was a rock star for three or four years in my own mind. Traveling in a seven-man band around the United States, we were working in the era of disco. And we have alligators from the bayou. We have cow skulls, the fastest fish in Michigan. It's all here. This is from um, Audie Murphy's collection. The memorabilia is here. I only get one little corner of the castle. And that's all I need. And this is what I write. Right here on this little laptop. You'll notice on the shelf is a collection of toy soldiers. Uh, I played with my toy soldiers in my room, constructing stories, inventing characters, but the storylines were very complex and I'd spend hours alone in my room, didn't go out, didn't have a playmate. My mother would open the door and say, are you okay? And I'd say, mom, I'm right in the middle of a battle. <laughs> so. That's my storytelling kind of came to me uh, as I was playing with my toy soldiers. They were my first characters. As a trial lawyer for 34 years, I've had at least 100 cases every year. In every single case is a story worthy of a book. Honey and Leonard started off as one such case in the 90s. And Honey was the maven, the matriarch of a small Indiana town known as North Manchester and she fell in love with a retired farmer from North Manchester named Leonard. So Honey and Leonard fall in love in their 70s. I get called in as the lawyer for Honey because Leonard has been found with high levels of arsenic in his blood. Now Leonard's power of attorney and sole heir does not want Honey around. Honey's asking too many questions, and the sole heir is already spending Leonard's money like it's her own. So she uses the arsenic in the blood, she calls adult protective, she calls the prosecutor, and immediately Honey is accused of arsenic poisoning Leonard. I hired a forensic expert, a forensic pathologist, and he determined quite early on that the arsenic in Leonard's blood was the result of exposure to pesticides as a farmer his whole life. But in the book, by the time the reader learns that fact, Honey and Leonard have fled to France because the law was going to keep them apart. So they decided, we're out of here. So it's love on the run in their 70s, the Bonnie and Clyde of love. The world falls in love with Honey and Leonard. And why do they fall in love? Because Honey and Leonard, this story is a parable. Honey and Leonard are love itself. They would risk it all for their love for each other, for caring more about the other person than about the self. And without giving too much of the book away, Leonard is in the early stages of Alzheimer's and Honey thinks her love will cure him. And she's in the process of finding out the very, very hard way that love does not conquer all. Or does it? Because what Honey learns in herself is it's not important that Leonard loves me, it's important that I love Leonard. The book is also about my father and his struggle and his eventual death from Alzheimer's. The book is dedicated to Max Smith, who died in 2006 at the age of 82 after a 10 year horrible struggle and demise from Alzheimer's. And it's a, a terrible, terrible disease. But it gives you insight into what happens with Alzheimer's. I always knew he loved me. He, he taught me how to play chess, how to play tennis. He was my hero. But I think the real question is, 
am I loved? Does somebody love me? You know, does my father love me? I always knew. My purpose in life is simple. Help other people. I'm trying to do that now with the stories. That's how I can help the most people. So that people can draw strength and hope from the story. And compare it to their own story and their own fears. But you're never going to, I don't feel I'll ever get any story worth a darn out there until I let that story write itself and I stop trying to control it. Need to 